Well, hello everyone. Ogre27 Kane here today, and I want to do my top 10 most valuable Metroidvanias in my personal collection. Now, we have to go over a few caveats as there are some different things I have to discuss, such as Moonscars here and the next game, Last Faith, are both games that have massively fluctuated in price, as I believe they have gotten similar reprints lately. I've seen them go for as high as 60 to 65, but right now I've seen some as low as 30 to 35, so the numbers may not be 100% accurate on those. Everything else in this list has pretty much gone up, except for a couple which have surprised me and have gone down. The other thing I have to mention is there's one last game I'm going to show as a special shout out here later on, but I could not get it to record. It really honestly kind of sucked because it's one of my favorite games on this list. Another thing I have to mention is that all of these are US NTSC North American versions. There are no European or Japanese versions on this list, as some of these games such as Ender Lilies here are a lot cheaper in Japan. All of these are complete in box, and the only other thing I have to mention is, as with all of these value lists, they wildly fluctuate within months, within weeks, within days of releasing these videos, so keep that in mind. So starting off our list here at number 10 is Moonscars, and I put $45 to $60 roughly in valuation, but this game has recently dropped a little bit and I've seen a couple copies go for around $35. This game is a lot of fun and it's a good value as there's a lot of game time here and a fairly decent world to explore. It is a Dark Souls style Metroidvania and it is very very punishing and difficult. It also has a few performance issues with the frame rate and there are some other artistic choices that may turn you off. But all that being said, I think it's a fantastic game and it's really worth your time. One more thing I have to mention is that although having a really good progression system, there is a bit of roguelike nature built into it to where every time you die you have this spite level that you have to re-level up, which can both impact your character in a positive and negative way, and it can change every run in how you take on certain bosses and areas. It can make the game a little more challenging or less challenging, but at the same time it's kind of a weird mechanic, so I have to mention that. So coming in at number 9, I have The Last Faith, and I originally had this down at $45 to $60 because a couple weeks ago when I started researching this video, that's the prices I was seeing on it. Recently though I've seen that Best Buy must have gotten a reprint because they had this in their Black Friday ad for $20. Bucks. That being said, I don't see this game lasting a long time at that price, and it probably will be a small enough print run to go ahead and just get it now. This game may age better on this list than some of the other ones and may continue to rise rapidly. It did recently just get a 1.9 gigabyte patch, which I haven't been able to test very much of it yet, but can confirm it does run a little smoother in some areas. This game is a lot of fun, it's got a great Castlevania aesthetic with a lot of Dark Souls mechanics and a really large map. This game is definitely worth your money and your time. So here at number 8, we have Record of Lotus War, Deedlet and Wonder Labyrinth. This game sells for roughly $50 to $65 a copy, and it is a good value for your money. It has a very strong Castlevania vibe, with very similar art and aesthetic, but a great performance, and the item and inventory management system is something you'll recognize if you've played any Castlevania. 
The game has kind of a weird mechanic where you have to switch between this fire magic and this ice blue magic, and it really does involve most of the mechanics to the game, so if you don't like that, it may turn you off, and I don't blame you at all, because it really did kind of annoy me in certain parts. But that being said, the game has a nice aesthetic to it, and the map is big enough to keep you entertained for about 5 to 10 hours. There's not really a ton of replay value here, as you can pretty much 100% everything, but the story is good enough to keep you involved and make you want to see more. So go ahead and check it out. So here at lucky number 7, we have Ghost Song, and this game is roughly staying locked around the $60 to $65 mark. Yes, I have seen it a little bit cheaper from time to time, but for the most part, that's where it's at. This game has a very, very similar to Super Metroid vibe, I would give it, and it's a lot of fun with a great story. The performance is a little off from time to time, but it was never enough to ever bother me in it. The game does have some very tight platforming and maneuvering, and it is based on the mechanic of your gun, so although having melee weapons and melee attacks, it's not really something you depend on too much. The game really is a lot of fun, and I think you should check it out, as the game is getting a little more rare, and it's not a terribly large print title. This is one that's totally worth your time and your money. It was a good fight, huh? fighting you. I should rest now. So here at number six, we have Salt and Sanctuary for 70 to $75. And this game is honestly the one that's a surprise to me because on my previous most valuable games, this one was a lot more valuable. I had seen this game selling for over $100 consistently and it really blew my mind to see it so cheap. I don't know if I got a reprint run or something's going on with it, but hey, that's good for everybody else because this is a great game. This is pretty much the earliest adopter of the Dark Souls 2D mechanic on the Switch. And although not having an in-game map, which is pretty darn annoying, it does in the complete version come with a map. There's a lot going on in terms of the skills here. As you can see, this is a massive skill tree world and I'm a level 137 and I haven't even scratched the surface. There is so much to do in this game in terms of how you want to build your character and the mechanics and the weapons involved with it. But it is something that you really have to consider because it's cheap enough now that you might want to just get it while you can. So in at number 5, we have Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights, and this game sells for roughly $70 to $75 for the US copy. If you want a cheaper version, you can buy the Japanese version, which sells for roughly $30 to $35, and from what I understand is completely playable. Now this game has an absolutely gorgeous art and aesthetic, and a wonderful world to explore. The map is large enough to keep you into it for about 20 to 25 hours, and it does have a great story. Now for me, this is the game that really just spurred on my idea of making this list as I have seen this game slowly rise in value as people discover it more and more. The poll question that I ran asking what's the most valuable genre to you really surprised me because I really expected Metroidvanias to be a higher 
number on that list. It really wasn't. Most people consider RPGs to be more valuable. And that's fair enough, as there's a lot of them out there. But for me, this is the game that really got this video rolling. Now in here at number 4 we have Time Spinner, and this game sells for roughly $90 to $100, and this is one that has kind of fluctuated drastically up and down as well. I remember when I picked this game up I paid $35 for it. This game shot all the way up to around $150 for a minute, and now it's settled back down to around $90 to $100. It's a Castlevania-esque Metroidvania with a lot of really fun mechanics and some really cool characters. The world, unfortunately, is not terribly big though, although having two maps, they're very small in size, and you can really beat this game between 5 and 10 hours and 100% it. That being said, it is worth what you want to invest in it, but not necessarily worth its high price tag. If you can find this game cheap, pick it up, but I do not recommend picking it up for that price, as you will not see the value in the amount of time you will spend in it. That being said though, the art and aesthetic and performance are absolutely fantastic and do make this game a worthy game to be on anybody's list. So check it out. Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. So in at number 3 we have the Guacamelee 1 2 Punch Collection. And this includes Guacamelee 1 and 2 and all of their DLCs complete on the cartridge. That's right, 100% complete. This is a great value for the entire package that it is, but having that $100 to $110 price tag is a little steep right now. I don't know if I'd pay that and it might be just worth picking up any other way you can. The game is a great value though, and it is a lot of fun, and if you like the luchador aesthetic, this game will be a blast to you. It has great mechanics, tons of different things to explore, and a great world to check out. There are different maps that go throughout past and present, and a lot of really colorful characters that really keep the story interesting. One thing I will say though, is this game has some crazy outlandish humor, and if that bothers you in any way, shape, or form, you may want to hold off and check out some videos. All that being said though, the game is a great value for what it is, and I highly enjoyed it. I do recommend this, and this is one that I think everybody should put on their list. Here at number 2, we have Blasphemous, and this one really surprised me, because this game is now selling for anywhere between $90 to $130 for the Team 17 version, not even the original release. This game is a lot of fun, and it is a great value for the amount of content you get in it, but at the same time, that price tag is off the charts to me. A year ago when I would have made this list, this game would have been like 40 bucks. It really surprised me how much this went up, and I think a lot of it has to do with the second one coming out. Don't sleep on the second one as well, because it is cheap right now, around $35 to $40, but it will probably rise in value too. I'm picking up my copy soon, and I highly recommend it. This game has a great world, a great vibe, a great aesthetic, great art, but it is a little controversial in how everything seems to function and work, and the things that you'll see in it. Some of the items you pick up, Eh, they're a little weird, and I wouldn't recommend this for a younger person, let's say that. This game epitomizes how fast values can rise. So 
So, in here at our special shout-out, we have the Mummy Demastered. And although being very valuable between $100 and $120, I couldn't get it to record. So, in at number one, we have Dust, an Elysian Tale. And this game is selling for roughly $180 to $200 a copy right now. Now, if you've watched my previous most valuable game collection that I have, this game was at the top of that list, but was considerably cheaper at that time. This is one of those games that just continues to rise in value, and I'm not really just trying to show this off to you, as more as I am disappointed that this even exists. The fact that a game like this can get so ridiculously expensive surely out of the fact that it's not just a great game, but it's wanted for limited run complete collections, highlight the disappointment people feel with these physical copies. Everybody should be inclined to be able to buy these games at a decent enough price, and manufacturers should be aware of this. They should not be able to create this artificial stagnation in the market. Is it a Metroidvania everybody must play? No, it's really not. It has a great art and aesthetic and a great performance and a great story, but it's not worth that price tag. So the whole purpose of this video is to hopefully show you these games quick enough to give you a fighting chance at picking some of them up, as I really don't like how all these valuations are so crazy. Thank you for watching today's video. It was a blast to make. I upload every single Monday. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And have a great rest of your day. This is Ogre27Kane, signing out.